Okay, so recently I found this guy on Facebook Marketplace. Shady, but found him. He had walnut slabs for sale for $100 a pop. This is, I mean, I'm 6'5", so this is a little bit of 6'8", 6'9", somewhere around there. Three inches thick, and he was selling for $100 each, and I asked him, hey, can I have three for 200 bucks? He said yes, which is the steal of the lifetime. Now I thought, oh, maybe they're not dry, maybe I'll just throw them in a kiln somewhere. He had them kiln dried and then let them air dry after that, which is the exact way this is supposed to be done. Based on my research, I've never done it. Uh, so we got three beautiful walnut slabs. They were all about three to three and a half inches thick. I spent a ton of time milling them up uh, after building a router sled. That'll be in a different video because I used the other two slabs for an epoxy river table, which is gonna be stellar. But this slab, we've been kicking around the idea, oh, what do we wanna do with it? Do we wanna keep it as a slab because it's so beautiful or do we wanna just mill it up and use it as walnut stock? And though I'm sure hundreds of you, if not thousands, will just read me for this, but we are gonna mill it up and use it as walnut stock for a toddler tower and for a high chair for my girl. So without wasting any time, let's start milling. So the first thing I want to mention is even though I'm using hardwood, you do not have to. I just happen to have the slab for really cheap and I want it to match my dining room table. You could go to a big box store, pick up a couple of 2x6s and a 2x4 sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood and do this yourself on the cheap. I will have plans available, the link will be below to my Etsy page and you can download those and make one of these. It'll have a full diagram and step by step instructions. Now I got these ripped down to five and a half inch strips, that way I could fit them on my six inch joiner. Now this slab was relatively flat off of the router sled, but it had been a couple weeks and I wanted to make sure even if the wood had moved a little bit and released some tension, I had totally square stock to work with. So I flattened one face and squared one edge on the joiner and then I could look into how I was going to resaw this. Now this would be a perfect time to have a nice 14 inch super powered resaw bandsaw, but I don't, so we're gonna need to get a little clever. Okay, so we got everything ripped down with a track saw. I know it was painful watching the slab get cut down. The real thing is all dimensional lumber comes from slabs to begin with, so let's not dwell too much on it and let's move on. Everything is milled, mostly it's jointed on one face and one side, so I've got a square edge, but this is two inch material or eight quarter material and I don't need it that thick and I don't wanna plant it down and lose all that walnut for no reason. So what I'm gonna do is resaw it. Now typically resawing would be done on a bandsaw because it's a thinner blade and you lose less material and resaw bandsaws are just way better at that. I don't have a resaw bandsaw so we're gonna use our table saw. We're just gonna take the blade up a little bit at a time. I've got a rip blade in here so it should handle it pretty well and we're just gonna feed it through real slow. So let's do that. A couple of things that can make this a little easier on you if you find yourself needing to do the same thing is use a feather board that helps keep pressure on the board as you're pushing it through the blade. Only cut about 3 8 to a half inch and in passes each time you go up and get yourself an in-feed roller to support the back of the slab if you have some longer ones. Otherwise, just go really slow. This is pretty hard on the blade. Even with the right blade, it's just, it's a lot of work for the table saw. So take it slow and you'll manage to get through. Once I had finally resawed through all of those boards, I took them to the pointer, referencing that flat edge I got from the joiner, not on the table saw, and fed it through to get nice, consistent thicknesses. Now these are obviously a little too long to work with, so with a little movie magic, we can turn this into this, and everything is cut to rough length, and we can take it to the table saw to get it cut to the right width. And while I'm getting these cut, it's a perfect time to throw out that if you guys are enjoying the videos, if you're liking this content, if you're gaining something from this, I would love it if you'd consider subscribing. I am not sponsored. This is not my full-time job. I just do this on weekends and evenings because I really enjoy it and I want to give you guys the confidence to tackle your own builds. So again, if you're liking it and want to consider subscribing, I would definitely appreciate it. And in no time at all, we have all of our pieces cut to the rough length and the exact width that we're going to need them. This was a lot of pieces, but this walnut is very pretty. 
Now, in order to get things cut to their exact lengths, I turn to my Rockler crosscut sled. I have the Jonathan Katz Moses uh, stop block attached here, which has zero deflection, which makes sure that all these cuts are exactly the same, which is very important because we want this to be very level and safe for my toddler to stand on. Now, the really nice thing about this Rockler crosscut sled, and I'll throw a link to this one down below, is it has the angle adjustment. So I can pivot it to the exact angle I want, lock it in place, and then cut that angle on all the pieces I need. Again, making sure that everything is consistent. Now, with everything cut, we could turn our attention to the joinery method. Now, I decided to use my dominoes because I didn't want exposed fasteners. However, you don't have to have a domino. You could use dowels, you could use pocket hole screws, or you could just use regular trim head screws, and that would be plenty strong. I decided to take my trim router with an eighth inch roundover bit and go through and soften all of the edges. We'll follow this up later with a nice finish sanding, but this at least gets us in the ballpark. Uh, before we got things glued up and then we'll go back through after it's glued up to make sure that all those edges look nice and clean As you can start to see in this shot as we pull the toddler tower together It does have a slight tilt. This is just to lower the profile It's not required, but I do think it looks a lot better and it kind of looks like the toddlers leaning into the countertop uh, again, it just makes the profile lower in your kitchen if you have a tight space and makes it less invasive. Not essential, but a nice feature. Then once the side components were assembled, I could mark for dominoes to assemble the cross components which will bring this whole thing together. Now, this rudimentary jig did work pretty well for these connecting components. However, for the subassembly sides, it was a little bit more tedious holding those steady, uh, but we managed to go slow and get it done just fine. Then, once getting all those holes mortised out, I decided to go ahead and do as much sanding work as I could before the final assembly. I find that getting in these tight little nooks and crannies is a lot easier with subcomponents than it would be with the whole toddler tower. That would just be really inconvenient and very awkward. As I mentioned before, when I was looking to make this toddler tower, I scoured the internet looking for videos and how-tos on how to make this particular design, and there really weren't a lot of good resources. So I decided to go ahead and make plans for this particular style. Those will be linked down in the description below. They include a materials list, a color-coded cut list, step-by-step -step directions, and a SketchUp file that'll walk you through the whole process. So if you want to support this channel, be sure to check those out. And now with our top and bottom sub-assemblies figured out, we can look at getting these two pieces connected. Now I find it's really helpful just to take a couple of clamps and pull those things into coplanar, just making them flush on either side before attaching our hinges and our latches. The hinges I put on the front of the toddler tower, I think I measured in about two and a half, three inches. It's pretty arbitrary the distance as long as they're symmetrical and they look nice. That's all that really matters. They'll function just fine. I pre-drilled these using a self-centering drill bit. This is a really, really handy tool to have when doing projects like this, so I'll be sure to throw a link down in the description below. Um, but pre-drilled all these and then dropped in my screws and did the exact same thing for the latches. One quick note about the latches, the ones I bought were just sleek black ones from the big box store. I liked them because I didn't have to paint, however the screws that came with them were pretty subpar. I even pre-drilled and I still managed to shear one of the screw heads off. So if you're going to buy latches and they come with screws, I'd go ahead and just pick up a quarter inch pack of cabinet screws to use those instead of using the ones that come with the latches. Just save yourself a headache. Now that our top and bottom components are together, we can take relative measurements uh, for the seat pan and the desktop and then cut that out of our plywood. Now, I do highlight this in the plans, but for the two panels that make up the desktop and the standing platform, I attach them differently. For the desktop, I actually use pocket hole screws because you'll never see the bottom side of this no matter what orientation the tower's in. 
uh, but for the standing portion, whether the tower is down or the tower is up, you will see both sides. So I attached that one using trim head screws through the side of the tower walls, and that is plenty strong. I think I used three screws per side to get that connected. And as always, when driving pocket hole screws, no matter what you're working on, I recommend clamping that piece down in the orientation that you want it, because as you drive those screws, it does have a tendency to kind of pull the piece in a certain direction, and the clamps will help mitigate that. And after getting the desk panel installed, we could turn our attention over to the platform panel. Again, I just installed this using a countersink bit and trim head screws, doing about three screws on each side. The last functional part of this build is going to be the seat pan or the step depending on the orientation and I cut this off camera the same time that I cut the desktop and the platform. Uh, I attach this using a countersink bit and driving screws up through the bottom and into the bottom of the seat pan. We are also going to add legs. I cut these at the same angle that the rest of the legs are cut at that way everything hits the ground flush but I did take relative measurements from the bottom of the pan to make sure that we didn't have any kind of unevenness. I used a couple of spacers here, I think total is about an inch and a half, just some scrap MDF that I had laying around. And then for these, I actually drove screws down through the seat pan and into those legs, and this secures those nice and tight. And with everything put together, we could work on finishing. Now, be sure to take off your hardware before you finish. I forgot to do this and had to go back and wipe mine off. Uh, but the finish I'm using is a wipe on varnish. This is General Finish's Armor Seal. I'll throw a link down below. I've used it on a ton of projects and it holds up really, really well. Once this was all finished and cured, we could get it inside and see what Amy thought about it. And after a little confusion, Amy decided that she really liked the tower. She likes being able to go up top at the countertops where we are and likes having her own space to do coloring and arts and crafts and it keeps the mess from the rest of our house. If you like this build, if you want to try it yourself, again, the plans are linked below and it has a cut list and everything you need to make this happen. Thanks guys. Until the next one, start your own project.